Ladies and gentlemen, if you will uh, start to take your seats, we're going to start the program in about 10 minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to get started. I invite you to please uh, start on your salads and join me. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming to the stage JA board member and classroom volunteer Mark Malik of Wiederman Malik. Good evening. Thanks for coming out to celebrate our inductees into the Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. My name is Mark Malik. I arrived here in Brevard County in 2003. Uh, many of you have known me since I joined the Board of Directors in January of, uh, of 2004. Uh, JA has always had a special meaning to me. We teach children financial literacy, and after the financial crisis we went through, I think we all see a financial literacy for our younger generations is very important. When I came to Brevard in 2003, uh, it was to start a business with my best friend from law school. We pretty much didn't know what we were doing and didn't know how to be entrepreneurs. We just knew we were lawyers. And uh, <laughs> we just really didn't even know what we were getting into. Uh, one key factor to our success, though, is that the business leaders of Brevard County always seemed willing to give us some advice whenever we needed it. And the laureate reception has always meant a lot to me because, as it turns out, many of the business leaders that took the time to give us advice were laureates. And they took time out of their busy schedules, not just to help us, but their acceptance speeches. We always took a nugget out of those acceptance speeches and were able to use them in our business. I just want to share a few of the things that I've learned over the years from the acceptance speeches of some of the laureates. Uh, in 2008, my good friend Scott Sorensen, where are you? He's over there somewhere. But, <laughs> he's at the bar. He did teach me how to go to the bar. But. <laughs> in his, his acceptance speech, he always told me there was nothing more important than family. And with that information, all I learned is how, no matter how busy I am, I've got to be there for my wife and kids. Uh, 2012, George Mkhitaryan is over there. If you guys remember George Mkhitaryan's speech, it was a letter to his son Mickey. It was about the organization that was honoring him. And it was at that time that I decided I need to focus on being with my sons and that I would teach my sons classes in JA. I just got done teaching the fourth grade class, two fourth grade classes at West Melbourne School for Science, and I've got one session left for two second grade classes right now. In 2012, Joe Duda, I think he's here. Here's Joe. Joe Duda explained to me that being an entrepreneur isn't easier. Um, I learned that I had to continue to work hard to succeed. And if I wanted to see my company succeed, I needed to focus some of my time on the next generation. I needed to give to my community so that the next generation will replace me and move business even further. He also taught me that it's okay if I didn't know. Just find someone who does and put them on my team. Joe also taught me that I stand on my faith in God to guide me through all aspects of life, both good and bad. Thanks a lot, Joe. In 2009, Sheriff Jack Parker also reminded me to how important it was to pass my faith on to my children. Last year's honorees were great. Carol Craig, where are you? Carol Craig and Mike Shaw. All right? Probably at the bar with Scott Sorensen. Great. Uh, Carol Craig's been a friend of mine for years, and she taught me that I had to take risks, but that those risks had to be calculated. Mike Shaw, I identify with you so much. I'm the children of immigrants. Mike Shaw came here from his country and turned into an unbelievably successful businessman. And I, I just appreciate everything that you do for our community. And it makes me just realize how great this country is and how much I have to do for the community. I do want to take a minute to remember our dear friend Bjorn R. Hermanson. I don't know where in the world that a young entrepreneur would be able to just walk up to someone like Bjorn R. Hermanson and sit and learn from a man like that. 
He always took time out of his day to chat with me about how our business was developing. During his speech in 2008, he told me that it was my responsibility to put people in the appropriate roles in the company. And if they, they weren't succeeding, that is probably my fault that I didn't have them in the right spot. Sometimes it wasn't always going to work out, but I needed to find the right spot for that person. The knowledge I received from past laureates, enhanced by other business leaders on our, on our board, um, was just been really helped us out. And I really want to recognize some of our board members, like Todd Starkey, uh, Brent Peoples, Larry McIntyre, Brian Curtin, Brian Lytle. These are all business leaders in our community that just sat down and always gave us time. I wanted to wrap it up with some special thanks to my dear friend, Chaz Hoyman. Here's Chaz. Chaz is our 2010 Business Hall of Fame laureate. You taught me about perseverance, Chaz. You always took time out of your schedule to sit down and talk to me about how our business was developing and how to take the next step. Um, you always taught me work, work someplace with your best friends. And that's exactly what I think I did. Uh, working with great friends like Scott Wiederman and Mark Wojcik, just my dearest friends in the world. Chaz, your relationship with Vani is just an example. Uh, I'm trying to set with uh, me and Aileen, and I really thank you for everything. Wish you all the best in your retirement. <laughs> I really wish I had time to go over all the nominees' speech or the laureates' speeches. They've all been so great. I've learned so much from all of you. Uh, Mr. Brown, I really appreciate everything you've done for the community. Look forward to learning from you this year. Mr. Potter, appreciate everything you've done. I can't wait to hear what you have to say this year. Congratulations to both of you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere honor to welcome you to the 30th Annual Junior Achievement of the Space Coast Business Hall of Fame Gala. Thank you, Mark, for setting such a celebratory and grateful tone for this evening. My name is Travis Proctor, CEO of Artemis IT. I've been on the Junior Achievement Board of Directors since 2012. And the mission of Junior Achievement to inspire <coughs> Brevard County's young people to succeed in a global economy appeals to me because I've been an entrepreneur since a very young age. In fact, my favorite game as a child was playing business. It actually caused a little bit of distress in our household because, you see, my father was an avid outdoorsman and an athlete, and I think he kind of hoped that his first son would follow in his footsteps. And I can remember on my 11th birthday, when my parents asked what I wanted, <clears throat> the dismay on the look of his face when I told him that I would like an executive desk with a full return, <laughs> a leather seat, and it would sure be nice if I could have a telephone. I know that what he really wanted me to say is a football or a basketball or a mountain bike or anything that would have gotten me outdoors. But I think he began to realize at that moment that this kid probably was not destined for an athletic scholarship. <laughs> of course, everyone else, having seen me throw and attempt to catch, knew that we were in desperate need of a plan B already, so. He did, however, buy me that desk, minus the phone, and I spent the next several years strategically planning out all the businesses I was going to start in order to take over the world, which really mostly meant just plans to um, liberate my brother and sister and their friends of their allowances. <laughs> when I turned 16, I did start my first business, and then the month I turned 20, I started Artemis IT as a sophomore here at Florida Tech. While I did not have the opportunity to participate in a junior achievement program, I was the recipient and support <clears throat> and received mentorship, first from my family, but then from the business men and women <clears throat> who subscribed to the ideals of junior achievement, even if they didn't know that's what they were doing. To that end, I am grateful to have been influenced and mentored by many of the folks here in the rooms this evening. But tonight, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from titans of entrepreneurship and of industry and folks much more impressive than myself. And, and by those, I'm referring to the seven-year-olds that will be up here in just a few minutes. <laughs> this evening, we will induct, however, two exemplary business and community leaders, William M. Brown and William C. Potter, <clears throat> into what has become a community institution honoring Brevard leaders of distinction for over 30 years, the Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. 
That's 30 years of talent and 30 years of leadership. But let me connect also the symbolic dots for you. As we all know, Mr. Brown <clears throat> and it, it led the decision to keep Harris headquarters uh, here in Brevard this past year. Thank you. <laughs> 30 years ago, our very first inductee was Dr. Joseph Boyd, who was the Harris CEO who moved the Harris headquarters to Melbourne. JA Business Hall of Fame has 30 years of honoring the men and women who have made a distinct, significant, and compounding impact on Brevard County. And now for tonight's invocation, written and delivered by Sophia Tuzo, a fourth grade student from Sea Park Elementary. Candace, did we find a step stool? Nobody was listening, not athlete. Um, so that was a very heavy, very heavy step stool. Hi, my name is Sophia Tuzo. I'm in fourth grade and I go to school at Sea Park Elementary. Ladies and gentlemen, let us please bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather tonight to recognize individuals who have shared their time, talent, and support to make the Junior Achievement Program possible. We would like to thank those individuals involved in JA for inspiring kids like me through their leadership and encouragement to dream big and reaching our full potential. Heavenly Father, please continue to watch over these men and women who make this program a success. Thank you, Father, for the meal we are about to share together with such giving and caring people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please stand as Evan Call, a seventh grade student at Delora Middle School, leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Evan and Sophia. Uh, Evan is, is quite a trooper this evening. As you can see, he uh, injured himself, but still wanted to commit to uh, come up here and do that for you. So if we can give them both another round of applause. Our next two presenters this evening played a large part 30 years ago at the very first Business Hall of Fame. I now welcome to the stage Junior Achievement Board members Steve Audino and Dick Bombach. Good evening. My name is Dick Baumbach of Baumbach and Fisher Public Relations and TNR, Talk Network Radio. And in 1996, I was co-chair with Fred Hayes of the first Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame for the Space Coast. I want to just do one thing. I want to acknowledge my personal laureate for the past 50 years, my wife, Diane.
I, I'm pleased to be able to salute our laureates tonight, especially with this gentleman here. Thank you. My name is Steve Audino. I'm with Wells Fargo Advisors, and I was the very first student presenter of the very first Business Hall of Fame laureate, Dr. Joseph Boyd. Now, I was a junior in high school, and uh, I was first introduced to this gentleman standing uh, to my left. And when I first met him, he had a full head of hair. And uh, by the end of the Business Hall of Fame, this, this had happened. And Dick, what, were those, what was the guidance that you gave me before my speech? I was nervous getting up in front of 400 people. Do you recall what you told me? Yes, it was basically, Steve, that you look at everybody as if they were in the bathroom, and it makes everybody the same. <laughs> Well, that's a little bit too much information, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Dick. So it was my great pr pleasure uh, to introduce Dr. Boyd, um, a founder here of Harris uh, and our first laureate here on the Space Coast. I have to say it gives me an incredible amount of pleasure to recognize our attending laureates this evening. And on that note, please be seated, which you all are as we collectively honor the men and women who have made outstanding contributions to free enterprise to the Brevard County community, have demonstrated business excellence, courageous thinking and actions, vision and innovation, inspiring leadership, social responsibility, and who serve as role models for those who follow. Would our distinguished laureates in attendance please stand when your name is announced and remain standing. Please withhold your applause until all the laureates are announced. Dick, I'll give you the easy ones first. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. 2015, Carol Craig. <laughs> so again, if you don't mind, just withhold your, withhold your applause until we're done. That means you, Anderson. 2015, Mike Shaw. Thank you. 2014, Pamela Gatto. 2015, Jack Riles. 2013, Robin Fisher. 2012, Joseph A. Duda. 2011, Fred Sutton. 2010, David O. Brock. 2010, Dr. Katniss. 2010, Charles Hoyman, Jr. 2008, Dr. George Mkhitaryan. 2008, Scott Sorensen. And 2008, Bjorner Hermanson. Two thousand seven, Nick Helreth. Two thousand six, Dr. Jolie Smith. Two thousand five, Leonard Sandy Sanderson. Two thousand three, E. Lang Houston. Two thousand three, Robbie K. Roberts. Two thousand two, Tom Wasden. 2002, Roger W. Dobson. 1999, Philip Farmer. 1989, Hugh Brown. And 1988, Dr. Maxwell King. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you 30 years of Business Hall of Fame laureates. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have one more item of business before we pause for dinner. Who would like some diamonds? Anyone? Diamonds? 
donated by Jenna Jewelers in honor of our 30th anniversary. Many of you here tonight have already uh, taken a chance to win the Two Hearts on Fire diamonds totaling three quarters carat with a value of 4,000. Jenna Jewelers will transform, transform those into diamond studs. <clears throat> they will be on sale outside uh, during the dinner service. So if you did not get a chance to uh, purchase your ticket uh, during the reception, please do that during dinner. Again, thanks to Jenna Jewelers. Dinner is served and program will begin in approximately 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you uh, enjoyed your dinner. Uh, please feel free to continue. <laughs> if I can uh, get your attention, please. I know you're enjoying the conversation, but we would like to continue the program. I would uh, first like to uh, take a moment to recognize a laureate that um, we uh, inadvertently missed earlier, Eugene Burning, Bjerning. Uh, Gene, I think, is over here. Is he, oh, he stepped out of the room, and he stepped out of the room. <laughs> of course, he stepped out of the room, so please tell him we recognized him when he returns. <clears throat> You know, one of the things that when I uh, joined uh, Junior Achievement, as I said, it, uh, definitely the mission of teaching our young folks uh, and <clears throat> the idea of economics and learning about wants and needs and, and financial matters was important. And, you know, I took that to heart. When, when I had a son, um, I wanted to make sure that I was teaching him some of those same messages. And he's four years old now, and he, he, about uh, three months ago he came up to me and he's, and said, you know, Daddy, why do you work so late all the time? I don't like it when you work late. I want you to come home. And so I thought this was a perfect opportunity for me to explain to him. And I said, son, Daddy works late so that I can earn money, which, of course, didn't mean anything to him. And so I said, well, you know, money, let me, let me tell him about needs and wants. He said, money is how I <clears throat> make money in order to buy food and to pay for the house that we're in. And I said, and to pay for the apps on your iPad. Now, when I got to those once, he, he, it began to, to resonate with him. And he said, OK, Daddy, I understand. <laughs> About two weeks later, he came to me and wanted me to buy another app. And, and you know, th those apps are, are amazing, because every 15 minutes, they're asking them to buy something. And I told him, son, I said, I don't have enough money to buy you an app every time you want one. And so he, he was a little upset, but he left and said, OK. About 15 minutes later, he came running back, and he says, Daddy. I know why you don't have enough money to buy me apps. You didn't work late tonight. <laughs> he said, Daddy, you go ahead and work late tomorrow night, and, and, and then, I can, then I can have that app. So we're making some progress. We have a little work still to go. <clears throat> Anyhow, I would like to now welcome to the stage Brent Peoples, Senior Vice President and Branch Manager of Raymond James and Chair of Junior Achievement of the Space Coast Board of Directors, and Ann Conway Bader, President of Junior Achievement of the Space Coast. You're on the right page. You're first. So we have a very specific script to follow. And Tom Kasich over here says, if I don't follow the script, he's going to give me 20 bucks. So Tom, <laughs> 20 bucks, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Along with welcoming our two newest laureates, Bill Brown and Bill Potter, we also celebrate the future laureates and the future business leaders of our community our JA students representing schools across Brevard County. Our JA student ambassadors helped e check you in and will be helping with tonight's program. In addition, you may have noticed some students dressed in black. This is something new to Business Hall of Fame, a video crew made up of students placed around the ballroom. Jeffrey Heiser of Jeff Heiser Radio has been working with these students from Bayside High School to not only film tonight's program, but also to live broadcast the event. Hey, Dad. <laughs> in, in addition, we're exploring the concept of a monthly Junior Achievement radio program on his new national internet radio station formed with partner Dick Bomback. 
Student AV crew and student ambassadors, please stand to be recognized. There are a lot of dignitaries in the room tonight, but we do have some special dignitaries with us um, as well. I'd like to recognize school board member John Craig. <laughs> school board member and chairperson Andy Ziegler. J board member and Brevard Public Schools Southern Area Superintendent, Dr. Mark Mullins. We'd also like to acknowledge some elected officials as well. J board member and District 2 Commissioner and Chair, Jim Barfield. And District 1 Commissioner, Robin Fisher. Thank you all for your hard work on behalf of all the people and especially the students of Brevard County. It's JA volunteers who build a bridge between the classroom and the real world. Last, J last school year, JA volunteers donated more than 64,000 volunteer hours, equating to a quantifiable economic impact of more than $1.9 million, $1 million to Brevard County community. <laughs> Our volunteers are so important to demonstrate that anything is possible. They plant the seeds for economic success in entrepreneurs in K through 12 classrooms, and we truly believe the earlier the better, and you're about to find out why we think that. Please welcome to the stage second graders from Cocoa Beach Roosevelt Elementary entrepreneurs, Megan Warwick and Palace Green Bader. JA program, we learned about jobs and businesses and how they help our families and our town. We also learned about wants and needs. We learned a lot. For instance, a pair of sneakers is a need, but a pair of pink, sparkly, gorgeous princess sneakers might be a want. <laughs> Palace and I like sparkly things, so we knew we should try to earn some money. My grandpa Charlie Boyd is an entrepreneur, so I knew I could be one too. So Palace and I started a business. Megan and Palace's Marvelous Cupcakes. <laughs> we only use natural high quality stuff to make them and they're delicious. My mom is our sous chef, but we're the bosses. My favorite flavor is chocolate. And my favorite is chocolate too. Megan and I sell them in her building lobby and we take special orders for parties. We made $30 last weekend. We use our sales skills and big smiles to sell a lot of them. When we grow up, we're going to own a bakery. By supporting JA tonight, we'll be able to learn about run all about running our businesses in second grade and third and fourth, and all the way up till we're grown ups. <laughs> We brought some cupcakes from Mr. Brown and Mr. Potter, and we decorated your boxes with some business advice we thought you might like. If anyone would like to try some in order, we're at that table of, over there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So as you can see, volunteers 
are extremely crucial from kindergarten to 12th grade, planning the scenes for success in kids just like Megan and Palace. Last year, despite our best efforts, we were 45 classrooms short for the year, meaning we didn't reach 900 students. That's not gonna happen again, so we made some big changes. We launched a new standing committee chaired by Community Credit Union's Lori Capelli, decorated to recruiting volunteers and keep them coming back. The second thing we did, we applied for and won a LEAD Brevard community project to create a volunteer strategic plan and database to be shared with other Brevard nonprofits who also struggle with volunteer management. And we started a new corporate volunteer challenge. This was the brainchild of Mark Malik and launched by Wiederman Malik. The challenge invites businesses to challenge industry peers and competitors to provide the most JA classroom volunteers. So far, Wiederman Malik is taking on Dean Mead and Community Credit Union and Regions Bank are facing off head to head. <laughs> Participants are thanked by Clear Channel outdoor billboards. So if you're driving along 95, you might see the challenge on the billboard. And that's thanks to longtime Jay proponent and board member Larry McIntyre. Some of our most important volunteers are here in the room tonight. Our junior achievement of the Space Coast Board of Directors. Could all of our board members stand to be recognized? These people you see standing are engaged. They are hardworking. They are mission focused. And they are fun. Which as you know for a nonprofit makes things much easier. Thank you so much for your service. The next person I'd like to recognize is Dr. Maxwell King. Can you please stand? Tonight, we extend a special thanks to you. Dr. King joined the board in 1989 until he stepped down this fall after serving a record 26 years. Maxwell. Your contributions and service to Junior Achievement of the Space Coast stand as an example to us all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Finally, we'd especially like to recognize tonight, Natasha. <laughs> she just gave me a lesson on her name and now it's gone in my <laughs> Natasha Cartagena Spencer for her contribution as the Business Hall of Fame committee chair for the second year running, and can I tell you that it's not a small undertaking. <laughs> Natasha's commitment to JA started in the classroom as a volunteer. She chose us. We are so very lucky that she chose us as one of her philanthropic focuses. Her energy and focus galvanizes people into action resulting in this wonderful and successful evening. Natasha, thank you so much. How about we give her a well-deserved round of applause. Next. I want to thank also the Melbourne Hilton Rialto Place, our beverage sponsor for tonight. The staff and hotel management has worked very hard to ensure tonight is an absolute success. We'd also like to recognize those who continue to support JA with significant in-kind contributions. Laureate Scott Sorensen of Sorensen Mayflower Moving and Storage, who has generously provided JA with storage space, meeting space, moving services, trade show services, free of charge for more than seven years. Board member Rick Balda, who is donating the use of his office for extra storage space. <laughs> Board member Mike McBride, whose marketing support enables us to be seen and heard. <laughs> Board member Jeff Pearsall of Space Coast Business for their ongoing significant coverage 
of Business Hall of Fame and Junior Achievement in general. <laughs> new board member Bob Gabordi and Florida Today's ongoing support and new efforts to raise ground level awareness of JA, but also with tonight's programs and the wonderful laureate video productions produced by Rob Landers that you'll see tonight. <laughs> board member Adrian Roth and Brevard Business News, generous and consistent coverage. <laughs> board member Larry McIntyre, who can't be with us tonight because he's in New Zealand. <laughs> and Clear Channel Outdoor, allowing us to recruit volunteers thank sponsors, and recognize achievements. Please excuse us for all the thank yous. We are very well supported and we are very grateful. So Brevard's local colleges and universities are also incredible supporters of JA. Each summer, Eastern Florida State College hosts the JA Breakfast Pledge event and supports JA with student volunteers. We also have a new board member, Rich Laird. University of Central Florida has supported JA with tremendous numbers of student volunteers for more than 20 years by making it a requirement for graduation for many majors. And FIT. <laughs> a Ruby sponsor tonight. And just two weeks ago, Florida Tech awarded more than $352,000 in scholarships to the winners of the Be Entrepreneurial Business Plan Challenge in coordination with Beth Gitlin and We Venture at Florida Tech. The Business Plan Challenge is Brevard's own shark tank, bringing teams of high school students together to present and defend their business plans for a new service widget or STEM project. And with that, you're going to know how special this program is because we are about to bring to the stage the winners of the 2016 Be Entrepreneurial Business Plan Challenge, Mr. Vance McLeod and Mr. Garth Savage, inventors of Jam Circle. Here you go, boys. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Vance McLeod, and I am a senior at Vieira High School. And I am Garth Savage, and I'm also a senior at Vieira High School. Uh, we'd like to first start off by saying thanks to uh, our family and God, first and foremost. We'd like to give a thanks to Kathy Brown, our classroom volunteer, and a special thanks to Mr. Scott Sorensen. He, uh, he was our coach throughout the entrepreneurial program, and with Ms. Brown, they both guided us through the whole event and we couldn't have done it without them. As a result, Garth and I developed an idea that we believe would revolutionize the way you purchase, stream, share, and listen to music. Jam Circle is an all-inclusive music app including streaming, downloading, personalizing, and introducing a social media concept along with it. We focus mainly on connecting the world through music and technology. We believe music is a major factor in keeping society together and including a place to share, message, and communicate through the same platform, which enumerates the possibilities of ideas and an infinite source of networking. Jam Circle is truly special to Vance and I because not only is it a great app idea, but it is also a major part of our upcoming future. The, pro the projections we ran for our app combined with the relatively low startup cost and the package offered makes it a one-of-a-kind business venture. Garth and I have already decided to go through the patent and trademarking process and we have full intentions of, pursu of pursuing our dream and uh, creating and developing Jam Circle. For us, Jam Circle wasn't just a class project, but it was also an opportunity. It was the difference between looking back and having a lifestyle of what ifs or look at what we've done, look at how far we have came. We would like to thank the Business Academy and Mr. Sorensen for, all pre for presenting us with the opportunity to uh, complete this challenge. And I just wanted to make it known that I look out and I see not only a room of successful business leaders and community members, but a room of valuable contacts and maybe one day pot potential investors. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be standing here without J Junior Achievement. JA is on track to reach more than 10,000 students on the Space Coast this year, but there are still more than 60,000 students who they won't be able to reach. 
To do this, JA needs two things. They need good people like yourselves to support the organization, and they need volunteers. Uh, as you can tell, Mr. Sorensen made a real difference for us. Not only is he a major supporter of JA, but he took the time to support us, critique us, and challenge us throughout the entire competition. And here he is right now cheering us on as we are on the stage. JA truly makes a difference in our lives. Thank you for having us speak this evening. We're very grateful for this opportunity, and remember, we believe, we believe there's, there's a jam, a jam in every, every circle. circle. <laughs> Scott, what'd you do? Put 100 bucks in both of their pockets before they got up here? <laughs> and don't worry about Natasha. We told her to get rid of that Latino flair a long time ago, so she went and married Brian. And it's a real simple, Natasha Spencer. <laughs> Love you, Nate. <laughs> you know, I can tell you on behalf of Brent and Scott and myself for teaching the classes this year. And uh, Scott, I know it was great, and you were honored by the fact that your kids won their seniors. You know, I was tickled to death that my juniors took three of the top five places. But actually, what I was more pleased with was what they actually taught us. And I know I can speak on behalf of Brent and Scott and say that if you're worried about our future, then you need to go get in one of these classrooms and meet these young people. We don't have a problem. What we've got is an investment we need to make into these kids because they need to learn from us and they, they're dying for it. They're asking for it. There wasn't a one of the 45 kids that I was in front of that just didn't suck up the knowledge. They loved the moment, they loved being around the information, and they really and truly possess an entrepreneurial spirit. And why do we want to have that spirit possessed? Well, a little over 100 years ago, there was a gentleman that came to this country. He left his wife and he left his three sons. And he had the courage to venture out to come here because this country represented opportunity. It represented the ability to take an entrepreneurial spirit, a spirit of accountability, a spirit that if you worked hard and invested into the people around you, it would come back full circle. And he came out of an Oviedo country store three years later, walking across the dirt road, and here comes a horse-drawn carriage. He drops all the groceries, because he can't believe that on the horse-drawn carriage is his wife and his three sons. That man was Andrew Duda. And on that same cart, that horse-drawn carriage, was the telegram that she had sent three weeks earlier to tell him that she was coming with the kids. Today, his grandson has built a community that we would all say thrives and creates a spirit in this community. And in less than a half a second, inside of the palm of your hand, one year, 100 years later, you can talk to Slovakia in less than a half a second. Folks, in the next 10 years, the amount of change that happened in that 100 will be magnified a hundred times. And in that change, you're going to look up in less than 10 years, and the workforce is going to go from an average age of 55 to an average age of 33. And the one thing that's missing along that spectrum is the wisdom that carries from the people like we're meeting tonight in the both of the bills. And both of you guys, I know that all the laureates in the past are quite jealous because I've been here for 10 years and I've never seen anybody get cupcakes. Congratulations. <laughs> Guys, we're living in a time of rapid change. We're living in a time where you back it up and you come to JA on the Space Coast and you've built one of the top 10% JA chapters in the country. You're looking at a JA chapter that has two full-time people 
Candace and Ann, stand up and take a round of applause, please. If you want to understand return on investment, two people caused through volunteers an impact to over 10,000 students. But here's the issue. The public school system, which we got the best in the state, one of the top few in the country, those teachers are telling Ann and the board there's 65% more capacity. That's another 7,000 students that just the teachers are asking. Please send us what you're teaching because you're teaching the kids financial literacy, you're teaching the kids responsibility, you're teaching the kids the spirit that this country was founded on, which was entrepreneurial spirit. You want to resolve all the problems in the country? Just turn to the entrepreneurs. If you want to have the greatest future, I will promise you this millennial age group is the single greatest promise we have if we only pass our wisdom to them. I want to strongly encourage you, on your tables, JA has set up a new program, and it is a pledge program. And I want you to understand what the impact is. $500 takes care of a classroom of 25 students. Now you can do that at $50 a month for 10 straight months, and you will impact 25 students. So to get this evening started the right way, and I know I can speak on behalf of both of the bills, when I say that, you know why they're here? They're here because of those kids and that legacy that we can create with those children. I want you to sit with your tables. I want you to share amongst your tables. I want to give you an example of the impact that you can have. Our table, Eric Wright, the senior editor of I-4 Business and Space Coast Business, Joseph Duda, and Cherie Sabin, our senior VP of uh, Business Development. Each family has donated $100 for 10 months, and Space Coast Business is contributing another 100 for a total of $5,000 from that one table. That will impact 250 children over the coming year. 250 children taught how to be with the entrepreneurial spirit will go impact 25,000 more people. That's the difference. That's the opportunity we have tonight to support Ann and to support Candace and to give directly. There is no other charity that fundamentally provides at the core the teaching that it takes to be able to have economic prosperity. You look around this country, Austin, Texas, Silicon Valley, Boston, you wanna see economic prosperity? It happens where there's entrepreneurial activity. So gather today, the high school kids and the students are in the crowd, give your envelopes to them, they'll collect them. When you do, they are going to give you an emerald ring in celebration of our 30 years. And in a moment, all of those rings are gonna be turned on as the lights in this room are turned off. So enjoy for a couple minutes and I'll come right back to you. Get with these students that are at your tables and turn in your envelopes to them. Thank you. Siri started talking to me.
Let's make sure we get those rings out to everybody. Students, make sure you walk your way through. And there he is, Scott Sorensen. <laughs> If you'll start turning your rings on, you'll notice that they'll flash. Press it again and it'll go solid on you. Show your support. I know they're still picking up some envelopes and I want to thank everybody. Candace, Ann, and everyone for what you've done, and uh, the board, all the great sponsors this evening. And at this time, I'm going to welcome back up Travis Proctor so that we can move on to the main part of the show. Thank you very much for your help and support. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation there. It's good to see all the green flashing lights out there. <laughs> if I can uh, get your attention, we'll go ahead and continue with the program. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let me first uh, start. Uh, I, know, I know you're all probably still filling out checks, but uh, if we can uh, get your attention back up here, please. All right, I'd like to uh, first take a moment to again congratulate uh, Garth and Vance and, uh, on Circle Jam and winning the Entrepreneurial Challenge. Congratulations. <laughs> I'd also uh, like to uh, just uh, share a quick uh, cupcake connection that I have with uh, Megan and Pallas. I too uh, tried uh, when I was a bit younger, um, one of my first entrepreneurial activities was to, uh, a cupcake business, although mine was uh, not as successful as theirs appears to be. I had two really fundamental problems with my uh, cupcake business. The first was that my profits uh, pretty much evaporated when my parents started making me pay for the supplies. <laughs> and, and the second was that I didn't really uh, know my market very well. I was trying to sell them to uh, junior high kids. And while they certainly had the desire, they didn't really have any money, which caused a problem. And I'm glad to see that uh, Megan and Pallas have uh, taken their JA teachings to heart because they're here this evening in a room full of rich people uh, presenting uh, their cupcake ideas. And um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. I think they were sitting over here. but. By the looks of some of the folks in the room, there's probably some folks in here that do like cupcakes, so um, right over here. <laughs> I'm not pointing. I'm not pointing to anybody. Um, but Megan and, and Pallas, I will take an, an order of 30 cupcakes for the next JA board meeting. <clears throat> really? Okay, so as we move on, as you heard, over 9,000 students were reached last year with Junior Achievement. And with your generous support tonight, thank you, we'll be able to reach more than 10,000 this coming year. Fresh off that round of support, let's acknowledge our biggest supporters. Next generation strategic giving is really where Junior Achievement is heading. Last year, we announced the creation of, the, of a new level of JA investment. Thanks to Parish Medical Center's Vice President Natalie Sellers and CEO and Laureate George McTarian, the Ambassador Circle was born. 
honoring long-term commitment at a significant level. Thank you, Parrish. And thanks to Rob Brain's commitment and vision for future generations of Brevard, United Way quickly became second member of the Ambassador Circle. Thank you, Rob, and United Way. Both these organizations recognize that sustained support is the key to allowing us to focus on mission, and both have pledged financial and volunteer recruiting support, which is a magic formula for JA. It's my pleasure to say that both initiatives have been a resounding success. JA was able to expand our presence in northern Brevard County by 28% in 2014-15, thanks to Parrish's investment in volunteer support. Thank you very much. In addition, by this June, JA will have completed programs in 56 Title I K-2 through K through classrooms, thanks to United Way's investment, and an additional 90 K-2 through classrooms, counting all Title I schools. If JA can teach children about wants and needs, about community, about jobs and businesses, all the while improving their literacy skills, there's a dramatically higher chance of them breaking the bonds of poverty. To improve a community, it has to be at every socioeconomic level. JA is serving United Way and serving Brevard in that mission. And so it gives us great pleasure to announce our newest member to the Ambassador Circle, Harris Corporation. A longtime supporter of JA with a three year investment of $30,000 and an ongoing commitment to encourage volunteerism. Just this year, Harris has placed volunteers in 55 classrooms between Westside and Palm Bay Elementary Schools. With this new commitment, Harris Corporation is launched into the elite group that makes up the Ambassador Circle. Bill Brown, Rick Simonian, and Brenda Sheets, thank you. It also very much pleases me to announce our fourth Ambassador Circle member, Southeast Petroleum, and our longtime friend, Mike Shaw. Mike and his son, Summit, have been supporting JA for years now. Mike is now on the board of JA, and they've become synonymous with the JA Golf Classic. Mike's commitment to the future of Brevard, his generosity to the community, and his belief in entrepreneurial values makes Southeast Petro a natural fit for the Ambassador Circle. Mike, Rashmi, Summit, thank you very much. George, Rob, Bill, and Mike, please stand and be recognized. Our students are bringing a small token of our appreciation. And finally, thanks to our friend and supporter, board member and laureate, the late Bjorn Hermanson, we now have a new individual level uh, ambassador circle created with a $5,000 personal contribution per year with the same three-year commitment. The Bjorn Hermanson ambassador circle will welcome individuals who share his commitment to free enterprise, hard work, family, loyalty, and entrepreneurship. Bjorn was proud to launch this effort. We'll be working to welcome others this year with our own chairperson, Brent Peoples, making the first commitment. Brent will welcome, Brent, welcome to the Bjorner Hermanson Ambassador Circle. <laughs> Thank you for your commitment to Brevard's children. And I just found out this evening that I am welcoming to the stage our newest Bjorner Hermanson Ambassador Circle member, Natasha Spencer. <laughs> Everybody hear me? Loud and clear? Yeah. Good evening. Are you, is everybody having a great time tonight? Yes? Thank you. It was due to a great committee and this partnership that I have with Ann. So round of applause to the committee. 
My name is Natasha Cartagena Spencer. I've got to put the Latino in there, okay? And it's truly been my honor to chair the 30th annual J Business Hall of Fame. Since its inception in 1919, Junior Achievement has partnered with leading businesses in an ongoing effort to inspire young people to dream big and reach their potential. Tonight is no exception. And we are honored to count more than 70 businesses and individuals as sponsors this year. I encourage you all to review your programs and refer to your programs for the complete listing of this year's sponsors and say thank you. For the second year in a row, we have two diamond sponsors, Health First and Wells Fargo Advisors. <laughs> we all know Health First is a leader in the Space Coast region, positively, positively changing the health and wellness of the communities they serve. Health First contributions this evening will support J programs in over 20 classrooms, affecting more than 400 students. Did you hear that? Over 20 classrooms and affecting over 400 students. Please join me in thanking President and, C and CEO Steve Johnson of Health First. Thank you. And I also want to give a shout out to Kim Agee, also on the Business Hall of Fame Committee this year. Thank you, Kim, for all your contributions. My next acknowledgement is for tonight's second diamond sponsor, Wells Fargo Advisors. Steve Aldino has been a fixture and advocate on the JA board since 2011. And as you heard, he was the first student presenter 30 years ago. And Wells Fargo Advisors has long been a proponent of financial literacy. Jay has been pleased to be a vehicle for the message as well as a beneficiary of their support. Upon branch manager and senior vice president Mike Frederick's survival on the Space Coast, he immediately understood what Jay is trying to do, empower future generations. Please join me in thanking Mike Frederick of Wells Fargo Advisors. Thank you, Mike. And now, without further ado, it is time to begin the 2016 Business Hall of Fame Laureate Induction Ceremony. Anne made me promise not to put any political comments uh, in this evening, but I would like to say that we have ensured that both of our, neither of our laureates have lost any top secret emails. <laughs> both, both of their hands are of appropriate size and strength. <laughs> and, and I do have, um, uh, on pretty good authority, that at least one of them still has his own hair. <laughs> yeah. Th thankfully, uh, while um, these criteria may be involved in our presidential election, here at JA, our criteria are a little bit higher as demonstrated, um, I think, by our distinguished list of past laureates. <laughs> and as is JA tradition, uh, this evening we have two students who will introduce our laureates, two outstanding JA students from the county who have undergone a rigorous application and interview process to be selected as student speakers tonight. To begin, I'd like to welcome to the stage Natasha Castillo. Good evening, my name is Natasha Castillo and I am a junior at Palm Bay Magnet High School. After high school, I plan to join the study abroad program at Queen Mary University of London. Before junior achievement, I never truly understood terms like taxes, gross, and market economy, nor did I pay attention to things like budgeting and becoming financially literate. Through junior achievements, economic textbooks, Students in my class were encouraged to openly discuss topics such as spending versus saving. We were given tools to make intelligent, economic, and academic decisions. And we ended the program more educated and prepared for college and the workforce. Tonight, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Mr. Bill Brown as one of the 2016 Junior Achievement Hall of Fame laureates. Mr. Brown's hard work and dedication has proven successful, as he currently holds the position of President, 
CEO, and Chairman of Harris Corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the screens for a, visit, for a video presentation produced by Florida Today. If there is one belief that Bill Brown lives by, it is giving 100% of yourself to whatever it is you are doing. You know, if something is worth doing, it's worth doing right. It's, it's if you're involved in something, your career, your school, a class, a sport, you know, if you're going to spend time on it, I think it's worthwhile giving it 100%. That philosophy was instilled in him at a young age where he watched his blue-collar father and homemaker mother provide for their family of eight in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Even though their house was small and money was tight, that didn't stop his parents from doing what it took to send Brown and his siblings to private, middle, and high schools. You know, my parents couldn't afford the tuition for Catholic school, so we ended up as a family working every day after school, cleaning the floors and taking out the trash and cleaning the blackboards and other things like that. Eventually, Brown would go on to receive his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Villanova University and take a job back home in Allentown at a chemical company where he would work while pursuing his master's degree. Brown then went on to earn his MBA from the Wharton School of Business and ended up in Midtown Manhattan, where he spent seven years at a consulting firm before joining the United Technologies in Hartford, Connecticut. In 2011, he accepted the position of CEO with Harris Corporation and moved with his wife Stephanie to the Space Coast. Since joining Harris, he has launched major innovation and operational excellence initiatives and spearheaded the largest acquisition in the company's 120-year history. And today, with all, a lot of new companies coming into this area, there's a lot of hiring, a lot of construction, a lot of development. You know, th this, is a, this is a real vibrant place to be. You know, and it's a very good workforce. I'm on the board of Florida Tech, and the size of the school is getting bigger. The quality of the people are getting better. Um, the, the workforce is fantastic here. So this is a, it's a great time to be here as an individual, as a company in Brevard County. It's a really, really good time. While Bill Brown believes his upbringing, work ethic, and social responsibility have carried him to success, he also credits whom he calls his three enablers, his wife of 24 years and his two daughters. And although they supported his many moves over the years, including a 10,000-mile relocation to Singapore, these women remain united on the home front. And we, we have a, a, a terrific family. In fact, you know, we're a we're family of four, so there's three women and one man. And, you know, there's, I wish I could tell you I've got one out of four votes. My, my job is to count their votes. i got no authority in my home, let me tell you. Overall, Bill Brown believes that volunteering throughout the community is important and that we all bear responsibility to give back whenever and however we can. And it gives you an opportunity you know, to give back to people today who may be less fortunate than you are today. And it's a reflection of the way I was brought up and the things that people did to help me when I was young growing up. Congratulations, Mr. Brown, on your many successes and on your induction to the Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. It is my honor and privilege to introduce the 2016 Business Hall of Fame Laureate, William M. Brown. Please come to the stage and accept your award. Well, thank you very much, Natasha. She deserves another round of applause. That's the next Megan Kelly, right there. I want to thank uh, the Junior Achievement XCOM, the nominating committee, the board, for this very, very special honor. And it's made more special because this is the 30th year. 
and because the first award winner, the laureate, was Dr. Joe Boyd. And Dr. Joe Boyd was the CEO of Harris in 1978 to 1987. He was then followed by a number of other CEOs that are here this evening, or are laureates in JA. Uh, Jack Hartley, couldn't make it this evening. Phil Farmer, I know, is here tonight with his wife, Jeannie. Phil. <laughs> Howard Lance, and of course, Nick Heldreth, who's up here in the front as well, is one of the laureates as well. So thank you very much for all of those folks. I also want to congratulate my, uh, my fellow awardee, Bill Potter, who is a uh, serviceman, retired, and I want to thank him very much for his service to our country. Bill Potter, thank you. <laughs> It truly is an honor to be a, a laureate with you. I also want to recognize my wife, Stephanie, the, of course, the CEO of the Brown household <laughs> and the CFO. I guess there's probably a few people in the room here who are married, have daughters at home, and I have to tell you, that's exactly what happens. Don't, don't deny it. Same thing in your house. Exactly. I'm sure. No votes whatsoever. <laughs> I want to recognize the Harris team that's with me today. Rick Simone, and thank you, Rick, and his wife, Mary. Thank you. Ed and Jill Joyce, Joyce, thank you very much. Ed and Jill, thank you. Jim and Pat Burke, thank you. Of course, Brenda, Troy, Sheets, thanks so much for being here tonight, before uh, Harris uh, joining me here tonight. So thanks as well to uh, Peter and Kateri of Jenna Jewelers. They're, they're someplace here. I know they were raising some money. The, um, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, they're just, you know, so if you can help them out, that would be great. They're helping us, and I want to thank them very much for being here tonight as well. So I'm, I'm very excited to accept this honor on behalf of all the employees of Harris Corporation. You know, Harris has a very long history of giving back to the communities that we work in, where we live, through, through both financial contributions. And just over the last five years, Harris Corporation has contributed $13 million in the communities that we happen to be in. But it's also the volunteer hours. And there's thousands of hours that our employees donate to a number of different organizations in Brevard County and elsewhere. And we recently launched a company-wide service program that we call HEART, Harris Employees Actively Responding Together. And of course, at Harris Corporation, there's acronyms for everything. <laughs> and I get a decoder ring. Every meeting I go to, Ed knows, of course, every meeting I go to, it's a good stack of 20 pages with how do you interpret all these different acronyms. And of course, our board gets very frustrated about this. Phil, I'm sure they're same thing when you were there as well, very frustrated. So it's Harris employees actively responding together. And this is a program that is encouraging employees to collectively volunteer 40,000 hours over the next 120 days across all of our employees in the company. And it's in honor of 120 year anniversary, which we celebrated just last year. So Harris has been a long supporter of junior achievement. Our volunteers have been teaching at J classes for, for many years across Brevard County. And that really is because the mission of JA is very much aligned with the mission of Harris Corporation. We focus on financial literacy or literacy in general, self-sufficiency, entrepreneurship, STEM education. And those are some of the characteristics and traits that are very, very important to a company like Harris and our success going forward. Of course, talent for, for me and for the company is really the lifeblood of the company. And growing that talent pool is my number one priority. I spent a lot of time talking with our board about how we grow talent within the company. We have 22,000 employees around the world, 6,000 employees here in Brevard County, 40% 40% of our employees are engineers or have some sort of scientific and technical background. And we're investing to add more. You probably notice we're having a career fair next week. We're going to add another 300 high paying jobs in Brevard County just over the next couple of months. So we're investing in people here in Brevard. <laughs> we're also investing in infrastructure. You might have driven by this big glass building down in Palm Bay. $130 million took us three years to build. We opened it up a year ago. You saw a picture of the groundbreaking not too long ago. You know, so $130 million. We're also investing $20 million to upgrade our customer briefing center, which is right next door to the Harris headquarters. And that should open in July of this year. So a lot of investment in Brevard in infrastructure. We're also investing in technology. Technology really is core to what we do. Our R&D spend, our research and development spend is up more than 20% in 
in the last four years, and it's at an industry high rate as a percentage of revenue. So we're investing in the future to drive growth through technology investments. And we're also investing to grow the company, and you heard a little bit of a reference to an acquisition that we completed last year, the largest in the history of Harris Corporation. We bought a company called Excellus. It's a public company, $4.75 billion in the price that we ended up paying. But we acquired through that 10,000 employees, $3 billion worth of revenue, and a broad portfolio of technologies that are really going to be instrumental to growing this company over, over time. And the investments that we're making in technology, in people, in infrastructure, are really starting to bear fruit. Last week, we won probably the largest contract vehicle in the history of the company, $12.7 billion. We won for Harris Corporation. That's on top of a contract we won last year in May for $4 billion in our radio business. These are opportunities we've been working on for well more than four years, and they're really now starting to bear fruit. So the company is really, I think, doing very, very well. We continue to invest heavily in Brevard County. And after 65 years in Florida, we're very, very honored, we're very pleased, we're very proud to call Brevard County our home. So thank you all to join your achievement for all that you do to support the youth in our community. And thank you very, very much for this very, very special honor tonight. Thank you, thank you everybody. Congratulations, Bill. It's my pleasure to have the opportunity to serve on the uh, board of Florida Tech uh, with uh, Mr. Brown. He, uh, he's not an alum, um, but I, do, I don't hold that against him because, you know, not everyone can get accepted into Florida Tech, so. <clears throat> Re regardless of that, Bill is one of the top business celebrity heroes of this community. And that is saying something uh, when considering the attendees here in the room with us tonight. Certainly, we are all grateful that under his leadership, Harris decided to remain headquartered here in Brevard. That was a critical and pivotal decision that I'm confident will serve to the benefit of both our community and the Harris Corporation for generations to come. However, the reason that Bill is the hero to me is because of the less visible decisions that he and his leadership team make on a daily basis that continue to build upon the global success of one of our community's most powerful economic engines. Harris employs thousands of our fellow citizens, supports hundreds if not thousands of our community initiatives through programs such as HEART that he just shared with us, and helps securely establish Brevard on the world stage. He is a hero to me because of, ev of every day this is how he chooses to make Brevard a better place. My son would oh, My son would ask if he's a hero, then does he have any superpowers? <clears throat> I would not doubt that he has uh, many of those, um, but I will say that if you've ever met his wife, Stephanie, clearly he must possess the superpower of persuasion to have convinced such a beautiful and kind woman to follow this journey with him. <laughs> But you know, something else uh, that I think um, <clears throat> I have come to learn about uh, uh, him is that he's also very considerate. He's mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Harris celebrated a 120 year anniversary not too long ago. And uh, Dr. Joseph Boyd, who we've talked about a couple times this evening, was not able to attend because of health reasons. And Bill took it upon himself to drive down to Vero Beach to personally deliver him the commemorative plaque and spend several hours speaking with him. And Dr. Boyd was deeply moved by that personal touch, and I know because that story was shared with me. So Bill, thank you for taking on that kind of personal touch. <laughs> Somebody's left their very nice pen up here. 
All right, our second inductee is Bill Potter. And Bill is a personal friend of mine. I first met Mr. Potter when I was a student at Florida Tech. My first real recollection of interacting him was uh, not too long after I had been elected to student body of the Florida Tech, uh, and uh, Bill, I think, was uh, chairman of the board at the time. And of course, I was 19, knew just about everything, and I was pretty sure that I um, had a much better plan on how to run the university than, than the current administration. <laughs> It wasn't Tony, so um, yeah, thanks, Tony. <laughs> Anyhow, so I, I scheduled a, an appointment, and, and uh, he graciously took that appointment, and, and I attended with a plan of enlightening him. <laughs> he was very courteous. He, he, he listened to our concerns and ideas, and, and then, frankly, he proceeded to enlighten us. <laughs> we didn't change the world that day, but we did leave feeling respected, and included. And my respect for him has only continued to grow over the years. And it was a very proud moment for me when he was among uh, the group 15 years later to, join, to welcome me to the Board of Trustees of my alma mater. Bill has served his community and his country his entire life. And this community will reap the benefits of his work and volunteerism for generations to come. And much like Bill Brown, Mr. Potter's impact and legacy is more global than just here in Brevard County. As mentioned in his bio, Mr. Potter served as head of the Rule of Law Department in the office of the High Representative in Sarajevo, Bosnia, and Herzegovina. I'll say that twice real fast. He managed over 200 judges, lawyers, and criminal investigators from more than 15 different countries. <clears throat> I don't know if you heard, that's over 200 lawyers. That's a, that's a monumental task, right? <laughs> but not only did he successfully manage those, they drafted the primary legal codes, reconstituted the entire court system, and then investigated and prosecuted war crimes as well as organized crime and political corruption. Folks, this is the kind of stuff you read about in history books along with words like founding fathers and nation builders. There can be no question as to why Bill is being inducted tonight, although I am quite sure that he would give much of his credit to his lovely wife of 51 years, Wendy. Our next speaker, Laureate Jack Riles also has a connection with Bill, and I would invite Jack to please join us on the stage. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of one of the Emerald sponsors of this event tonight, your Orlando Melbourne International Airport, I'd like to add our welcome to all of you. A couple of the other members that serve on the Airport Authority are here. First and foremost, our immediate past chairman, Bill Potter. And Bill, I was really glad to see that you could stop by tonight. <laughs> <laughs> also here is from Melbourne City Council is Molly Tasker, who has served us well for several years. There's a very logical tie-in between the airport and junior achievement. Junior achievement teaches and promotes free enterprise capitalism, and the airport is a major economic engine in this area. Did you know that there's $84 million worth of new construction going on at the airport right now and there's more to come? Did you know that 13,000 people in this area go to work every day on airport property and there's more to come? Before too long you'll see a new air traffic control tower that's actually higher than the tail on some of the planes that roll on the ground in front of them. I think that's going to be kind of nice. <laughs> There's going to be a total transformation of our terminal to reflect our coastal casual feel and make our visitors feel welcome and appreciated. A few years you won't recognize the place. So tonight, two of our true community leaders are being honored, Bill and Bill. Bill Potter has distinguished himself at the airport, in this community, in our country's service, and on the world stage to a level that might even be unique. As for Bill Brown, all of us in this room celebrate the economic wins this area has had the last several years, Project Jaguar, Project Trident, Project Magellan, but probably the biggest win of all was a keep. By keeping the Harris Corporation headquarters here, as opposed to moving it closer to the D.C. area where much of their business future rides, we were the big winners. Honoring Bill Brown's role in our community's future is most heartfelt and approach, uh, appropriate. Thank you, Bill. Both bills. 
I was asked to provide just a little reflection on this event as a past laureate. The only thing I can think of is that when I was first notified that I was to be so honored two years ago, I quickly looked up to see what it involved. When I read through the list of past laureates, all I could say was, what? What am I doing here? Now, I've got some friends over on this side of the room that had the same reaction, so there must have been some <laughs> validity to it. But I don't care how accomplished you are, I don't care how many honors you've received, this list is humbling. Unless I miss my guess, Bill and Bill are sitting there thinking to themselves, you know, this is cool. So on behalf of the airport, welcome to everyone. Congratulations to Bill and Bill, and let's keep it going. <clears throat> now it's my pleasure to welcome Corinne Britton, a Cocoa Beach student studying in the International Baccalaureate Program. Corinne will be inducting Bill Potter this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Corinne Britton. I'm a junior at Cocoa Beach Junior Senior High School, and someday my plan is to go to Norwich University in Vermont and hopefully someday be an officer in the U.S. Navy. <laughs> Junior Achievement is a resource for young adults. It equips us for the business world ahead, gives us the confidence to make a difference, and the inspiration to never stop. Without junior achievement, I would not have these opportunities. I've, lived in, I've learned important skills that I can use to get a job now and be successful. I crave opportunity. I crave a life meant of meaning as early as possible. Our mentors tell us we are the generation of bright ideas with bright futures ahead of us. Well, I disagree. We are a generation of bright ideas living in a present every bit just as bright as the future. Tonight, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Mr. Bill Potter as one of the 2016 Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame laureates. While interviewing Mr. Potter, I discovered that we practice many of the same principles, and I am confident that if I follow his core values, my future will be as successful as his has been. Ladies and gentlemen, Please turn your attention to the screen for a short video presentation produced by Florida Today. By most people's standards, Bill Potter has lived a full life already. He's traveled the world, spent years educating himself, and followed his passions like nature, sports, law, and family. Yet one of the most profound attributes about Potter is the amount of time he spends giving back. So I, I think being, being part of something that is bigger than you, that you are as an individual is what really makes life uh, fulfilling. Bill Potter was born in Flint, Michigan into a family already devoted to both civic activities and hard work. His grandfather, one of his role models, achieved an 11th grade education and worked his way up the ladder from messenger to president of the second largest bank in Michigan. After graduating from Brown University with a degree in political science, followed by the University of Michigan Law School, Potter's sense of obligation to the community took root when he enlisted in the Florida Air National Guard in 1967, shortly after arriving in Brevard County. Having originally accepted a position with a law firm in Detroit, one trip to Brevard at the peak of the space race was all Potter needed to reconsider. So we came here in January of 1965. That was at the height of the space race, the, the Apollo program to put the man on the moon, which they did in 69. And it was really an exciting place to live. Very entrepreneurial, very, uh, did a lot, of course, a lot of high tech uh, that had been they had come here as a result of the, the space effort. It was just, you'd see the astronauts and, and uh, the seven original astronauts, you'd see them in the restaurants and all over town. Potter established himself in Brevard County and practiced law both privately and for the cities of Melbourne, Indy Atlantic, and Melbourne Village. During his more than 30-year tenure in the military, Potter retired in 2000 with the rank of Colonel along with countless awards, including the Legion of Merit, the Air Force Commendation Medal, the Air Force Achievement Medal, the Air Force Meritorious Service Medal, and the NATO Medal. 
Potter then held several international diplomatic positions, including head of the Rule of Law Department in the Office of the High Representative in Bosnia-Herzegovina, duties he considers to have had the biggest impact, but about which he remains stubbornly humble. Back and I had the uh, good fortune of being involved with people who, who uh, helped me and, and had the same objectives that I did. Mm -hmm. Throughout his life, Bill Potter credits his wife, Wendy, his children, his parents, and the military for being a source of constant strength. Hard work coupled with balance is the formula he has found successful, particularly when it comes to making time for his children and grandchildren. Having rarely missed any of their important events, he considers his three children his greatest pleasure. My, my most prized achievement are my children. I've got three really great children who, you know, a lot of people, they, they look back and they say, boy, my, I had to live through a lot with my children. I, I'd never lived through anything but pride and pleasure with my children. They've all turned out to be great, caring people, and that's easily my best, that's my wife's achievement, really, not mine, but, oh uh, but it's my Congratulations, Mr. Potter, on your many successes and on your induction to the Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. It is my honor and privilege to introduce 2016 Business Hall of Fame Laureate, William W. Potter. Mr. Potter, please come to the stage and accept your award. Thank you very much, Corinne. Interestingly, Corinne plays lacrosse at uh, Cocoa Beach High School. My, grand <coughs> my granddaughter, Laura, plays for lacrosse at Holy Trinity, and they're, they're going to be playing in about a week, I think. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have some torn loyalties there. <coughs> Allow me to express my profound thanks for this recognition. It is indeed humbling to be recognized with, with Bill Brown and to join the ranks of past honorees, including so many people who I have admired and respected. I've observed for the past 50 years the positive manner in which our community has been shaped by many of these past honorees, and it's a true privilege to be associated with them. I would like to introduce my family, my wife, Wendy. We've, uh, as Travis mentioned, we've been married for 51 years. And any, uh, <clears throat> anything that, uh, any honor that I receive, she deserves more than half of it. Um, my daughter, Allison Bell, is here, and her husband, uh, Dr. Scott Bell and my three grandchildren, Laura, Davis, and Will. You guys, you three of you stand up. <clears throat> are, are, are they great looking kids or what? They, they, really, they really clean up well. I'm also very pleased that I have uh, some of my former law partners here with me tonight. Cliff McClellan and I practice law. Cliff is over there with his wife, Kathy. We practiced law together for 25 years, and uh, we always had a great relationship. Gene Cavallucci practiced with our firm for several years and went on to become the general counsel of Harris Corporation. <laughs> and Gene and I uh, and his wife Becky and uh, we and Wendy, we travel have traveled the world, and he even puts up with my golf games. So. And Eric Ponce is another uh, one that came out of our law firm, and Eric became an honest man and went into the insurance business, but he was a, we had a great time practicing law. But I'm really proud of the fact that I, I practiced law with those guys for a long time, and the fact that they're still friends says more about their uh, tolerance than anything else, because uh, I don't think I was an easy guy to live with, but uh, th their friendship is, uh, I really treasure it. Now, I guess the uh, gracious thing for me to do at this point would be to uh, utter a few platitudes about free enterprise and sit down while, while I'm ahead. However, one of the few advantages of advancing age 
is the freedom to express opinions that other people may not be interested in hearing. <laughs> You know, when, you, when you're younger, people think you're rude when you do that, but when you reach my age, they attribute it to the onset of dementia. <laughs> so, I, so I beg your indulgence for a few minutes while I exploit this opportunity in order to voice some concerns about where we're going. Junior Achievement has, as you are well aware, the important objective of teaching young people about the workings of the free market economy and how that economic system benefits our society. And when we talk about those benefits, most people think in terms of the material well-being that inures to society from that system. But that really misses the point. The salient point is that free market economics and the opportunities which flow from that system are the bedrock of democracy and essential to a free society. Without the opportunities for social and economic advancement offered by that economic system, a democratic society cannot endure and true freedom cannot exist. I think history proves that beyond debate. Only when I went to Sarajevo and became part of a management team attempting to repair a post-communist, post-conflict society, did I really begin to understand the role of market economics in a democracy and a free society? Prior to the brutal war in Bosnia-Herzegovina, that country had existed for 45 years under the heavy-handed rule of Tito's Yugoslavia and communism. What seems obvious now, but I must confess I had never thought much about, was how the absence of free market economics and the absence of the opportunities inherent in that system made a democratic system impossible. For the essence of market economics and the essence of democracy are the same. That is the opportunity to change one's circumstances in life. It is an essential requirement of a democratic system and a free society that its citizens be able to change their economic and social status through hard work, education, risk taking, and creativity. What I observed in Bosnia were the results of 45 years when those opportunities were not available. Under communism, the only way to change one's social and or economic status were through engaging in organized criminal activities or corrupt political activities. Neither of those activities leave room for a democratic and free society. And that's why much of our efforts in Bosnia were directed to fighting organized crime and political corruption. <clears throat> what concerns me now is that I fear that we are losing that economic and social mobility in our society. I'm well aware that in this audience tonight are many people who have been unusually successful in changing their circumstances in life through hard work, creativity, and willingness to take risks. I acknowledge that it can still be done. However, the overwhelming data indicate that fewer people are able to make that transition and that this unfavorable trend is accelerating. The data lead to the conclusion that it is becoming increasingly less likely that someone born in poverty will make that transition and it is becoming increasingly more likely that someone born to less educated and less affluent parents will be unsuccessful in changing their economic and social status through the institutions that have historically enabled such a transition. <clears throat> there are many factors that explain why that change has occurred and why it is less likely that people will be successful in making that transition. A lot of politicians will tell you that there are simple explanations for that trend. They'll tell you that it's the result of unfair tax policies or trade policies or conscious public policy choices which have caused those results. 
They'll tell you that they have definitive solutions to cure the problem. They will say that all we have to do is tax the super rich more or erect trade barriers or implement vast new social programs and the problem will be cured. Unfortunately, I think the problem is much more complex and that no one sentence answer will restore the opportunities which our society needs to offer. Some of the answers are political, but others are cultural. And I can't pretend to offer answers, but I can urge that we have a discussion to address the issue. I believe that our success in restoring the opportunities for upward mobility will largely determine what kind of society my generation will leave for our children and grandchildren. The problem has many causes, including technological changes, which have eliminated unskilled manufacturing jobs, cultural changes, which have destabilized traditional families, deficiencies in our educational system, which leave young people unprepared to work in a knowledge-based economy. <clears throat> Someone described the modern factory workforce as a man and a dog. The man is there to feed the dog, and the dog is there to make sure the man doesn't touch the machinery. <laughs> now, I'm not suggesting that technological change is bad. Technolo technological changes have brought enormous benefits to society. But I am suggesting that we can do a better job of adapting to these changes by understanding, understanding and considering the effects that these changes will cause. It's particularly essential that we foresee these effects in order to prepare a workforce with skills that are relevant to the economy resulting from those changes. We spend enormous resources in educating our children. Our per capita expenditures far exceed the expenditures of the countries which have been most successful in preparing their students. The data indicate to me that those early years of development are critical and that a child born into poverty, poverty will probably enter, enter kindergarten with a deficit that the system will never be able to overcome. A child who reaches public school without nurturing, without having been exposed to reading, without having learned the enjoyment of learning, begins with a disadvantage that it is unlikely will be overcome no matter how much money we pour into K through 12 education. We need to find programs which successfully teach essential parenting skills and which teach preschoolers to enjoy learning with particular emphasis on reading. If this sounds like a sinister program of big government paternalism that we cannot afford, consider that the alternatives are even bigger and more expensive government programs like welfare, criminal justice, unemployment, and incarceration. Per perhaps no factor has impacted upward mobility more than the disintegration of the traditional two-parent family. I raise this not as a moral or a religious issue, it is a socioeconomic issue. The evidence is incontrovertible that the single most important factor in predicting whether a child will succeed in school, avoid criminal conduct, gain meaningful employment, and become a contributing member of society is being raised and nurtured by two parents. But yet our society seems to continue to undervalue the importance of two-parent families and has almost tacitly endorsed the idea of giving birth without marriage. I suggest that the reversal of this trend is an essential part of restoring the upward mobility so essential to the free market economy. Another factor which has greatly inhibited the upward mobility that we value has been the epidemic of drug addiction and substance abuse. It's not an issue at the forefront of public discourse these days. We have, it seems to me, almost become inured to its pervasiveness so we would rather not discuss it. During my entire lifetime, we have tried to deal with this issue through the criminal justice system. We spent tens of billions of dollars 
within the criminal justice system and have seriously compromised the system in doing so. And we have utterly and completely failed to reduce the problem. Perhaps it's time to deal with substance abuse and addiction as a public health crisis rather than a criminal justice issue. We've experienced a lot of success in addressing public health issues. It's time to try a different approach. Now, I've mentioned only a few of the factors which I believe inhibit upward mobility within our economic system. I'm sure there are many others which we could discuss. One's political leanings will largely influence the manner in which they view the causes and solutions for this problem. What cannot be debated, however, it seems to me, is that upward mobility is an essential part of a free economy and that the decline in the frequency of upward mobility threatens our free market system. And by threatening that system, threatens the free society, which is the very foundation of Western civilization. Thanks again for this recognition and thanks for allowing a, a senior citizen to uh, vent. Thank you. <laughs> Natasha, you're working your way to the stage. Congratulations, Bill and Bill. I want to extend a final word of thanks for all, for all of you being here tonight, for honoring our 2016 Business Hall of Fame laureates, Bill Brown and Bill Potter, and for showing your support for our young people and their dreams to succeed. We could not do this without you. We apologize that we've gone so long, but didn't you guys have a fabulous time? And what an education you've gotten, right? And we've totally engaged the students this year. You know, we've never had students on the stage. Entrepreneurial Challenge winners, thank you, Rick Balda Foundation, FIT. We just, again, thank you. I truly hope you have enjoyed yourselves this evening, our committee. I want to sh make a shout out to a few of them. Kim Agee, I already named. Elena Garvin, our champagne uh, sponsor. Sissy Packard. Jessica Assam. Um, I knew this was going to happen. Dick Bombach, the first co-chair of Business Hall of Fame 30 years ago. Mike McBride, thank you so much. Candace Hodge, who got all the volunteers together. Mark Mullins from the school board. Who else did I miss? Just a Lord Mitten Young from Dean Mead. What a great committee I had. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Our committee, the J staff, the, Ye the J board, we all believe in what we're supporting. And I hope you learned a lot tonight. And I thought there could be no more powerful way to show commitment to the future of Brevard than to make my commitment to Jay in front of you all. So I brought a check. I filled out the pledge card. I'm pledging right here, right now, $150 per month. I will be personally supporting 51 classrooms right here in Brevard, actually 27 classrooms right here in Brevard. And I get a ring. Where's my ring, students? Where are you? I want a ring. <laughs> Please follow my lead and make sure, make your own commitment before leaving. Let me write this check right now before I get off the stage. I'm writing it right now. Okay. And I already had filled out the pledge card. Let's light up this night with hope for the future, and thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this evening. Congratulations to our laureates, Bill Brown, Bill Potter. Oh, I got my ring. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm going to wear it. It'll probably fit my pinky. 
and we're going to light up the evening. So thank you so much. Thank you, darling. And here you go. And you want to announce the winner? Uh, oh, she said the winner. This is the winner. Okay. Okay. Somebody, somebody has won diamonds. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> in anticipation of that, I will just say I know there may have been. Are you showing me the number? Thank you. I know there were some of you that may have been terribly disappointed that you did not get a chance to turn in those pledge cards. Pledge cards. Cards. <laughs> disadvantage of free flowing wine all night, right? Yeah, thank you. There will be students uh, at the doors as you leave this evening if uh, you do want to leave a pledge, cards a pledge card with them. <laughs> Anyhow, here is the number for the diamond. Two, four, five, two, three, four. Two, three, uh, two, four, five, two, three, four. Do we have a winner? All right. Congratulations. Thank you again all for coming this evening. Please have a wonderful evening and a safe drive home.